after I after I sit, they sit down and Raven and them talk to me. And it's another almost touching moment for me because it's like, man, somebody's recognizing that I work hard and stuff and has given me some advice, you know? So that was kind of nice. So I kind of went home and was thinking about, man, there's a bunch of characters in wrestling. Little things have happened. You know, I don't want to really copy anything. Mm -hmm. So I start thinking about what's going on. And, you know, at the time, Rick Fuller was uh, friends with Scotty Too Hotty. And remember him and Brian Christopher kind of teetered on that a little Very bit. Very close, yeah. Very close at the time. Well, I knew they weren't going to do that anymore. Yeah. So I thought, man, I can change this up a little bit. And I remember Ace and Gary from Saturday Night Live. And I said, man, I'm going to create a character that, you know, is like a friendship, but it seems like almost more than a friendship. Right. Like, so I set out to write this whole thing. I mean, I wrote it out. Here's what I do. The first match, I go down there. And here's the plus about this. I can put over whoever you want to. You know, I, you know, you got some guy you want to put over, I'm still putting him over, but now at this time, the person comes down. Right. Yep. So I put this whole thing together, the whole storyline. And, uh, so I bring it to Johnny Swinger cause he was my buddy. Okay. I said, Swinger, I put this thing together, you know, and he's like, Oh dude, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I think at the time Raven's gimmick was already done. The flock was already disbanded. I think when I, and I think Swinger was going to be part of the flock. He was going to be like a blind, blind flock member at the time, but it never ended up working out. So I said, dude, we're not, it's not like we're going to have to kiss or anything like that. I said, but we're going to do some things that, you know, just look this over. He goes, no, really, I don't want to. All right. So I, I thought, who's here is making some money. That's a care that, that, uh, you know, they probably like, and I immediately thought of Lodi. We, we would say hi. We never really had any big interactions, him and I. But I would, I would no, I knew who he was, and I would say hi. So we happened to be on a Saturday night live, or Saturday night taping one time. And I said, hey, man, I got this script, and I always carried it with me. I go, can you read this and tell me if you'd like to do this, if I can get it passed? And he reads it. He goes, bro, if you can get this passed, I'll do it. Yeah. So at the time, you didn't know who had the book, right? Kevin Nash had the book. Kevin Sullivan had the book. It was going back and forth. So I ended up giving it to Kevin. Didn't hear anything. What well, was Jericho's last night on TV before he was going up north? And he was going to go do a house show, one last house show before he left. I said, hey, man, can you give this to Kevin again just in case he lost this? So he brought it to Kevin. Didn't hear anything. All of a sudden, Lodi and I show up. It was in Kansas, I believe. And we're both at the Nitro. And that's kind of weird, you know, we're both here. And they bring us in the room, and I think it was Kevin that said, we're going to do that thing you wrote up, and it's going to start tonight. You're going to wrestle wow. Ming. You're going to wrestle Ming, and then Lodi's going to come down, and they did it just like I planned until all the heat started, right, with Glad. And we were going to be baby faces all the time. But we started this in the South. And you got to realize the South, wow, they don't right. like, you know, gay individuals in the South. So that's right. why the faggot chance happened and was live. And that's why they were having problems because they didn't have a, they couldn't do a 10 second pause because the whole arena was chanting, right? Yeah. So they said, oh, we're get, we got to do something because we got to make you guys brothers. And in between all this, I would talk to Rick and Scotty would give us ideas you know, like, hey, Brian and I used to do this, do this. Regal and Dave Taylor and Fit Finley, <laughs> yeah. would give me the Adrian Street advice. Like, hey, you should wear your hair in pigtails and you need to prance around and stuff. So that's kind of how that all came into effect. Good guys like that helping you out. Not, of, you know, not, of course, jealous of you or anything like that, but want to see you succeed. And we, we were entertaining and stuff. And then the, the office stepped in and of course they mucked it up really good because they said, we got to expose you as brothers, but they did such a bad job. Everybody pretty much thought we were married and they were like, we got to turn you guys into baby faces. I go, oh, we're already turning into baby faces. Listen to the crowd. When we do this stuff, they're starting to like us. Oh, you know, so, but yeah, that, that's how that got started. And then when I started, when I, when Lodi and I started traveling together, we realized how much we had in common. 
you know, just like everybody in the wrestling business kind of does have some stuff in common about, yeah. you know, we always wanted to be in this business together and all that kind of stuff. But we realized we liked the same shows and he was from Hilton Head, you know, and all that, you know, Dawson's Creek, that little series, that little girly series. I used to love that. He liked Katie Holmes and we used to, <laughs> we liked to train. And so, yeah, we just really clicked. It, it couldn't have, I probably, I couldn't have probably picked a better guy. 